Hi, welcome to Mechanical PE Exam Prep Question of the Week, the series where I solve HVAC problems for aspiring professional engineers. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the volume flow rate of condensate from an air conditioning unit. So let's get right into it. Removing moisture with air conditioning. An airflow of 15,000 CFM at 95 degrees dry bulb, 77 degrees wet bulb, is cooled to 53 degrees saturated with a cooling coil. What is the volumetric flow in GPM of moisture removed from the air? So we have this warm and relatively humid stream of air entering the coil and being cooled substantially. So we expect that in addition to the sensible cooling, we're going to do quite a bit of latent cooling as well. We're gonna remove moisture in the form of condensate. By the way, the picture here on the right is a condensate drain coming out of the bottom of a large air handling unit. There would be a pan which collects condensate dripping off the coil and the pan is pitched toward this drain so that water can flow down and out by gravity. Let's start with the given information for the air entering the coil and leaving the coil. And we'll call these two states state one and state two respectively. For state one, we know the volume flow rate entering the coil is 15,000 CFM. And we know the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures of that entering airstream. For the leaving coil, we know the temperature is 53 degrees, and we know it's at a saturated condition, which means that the dry bulb, wet bulb, and dew point temperatures have all converged to the same value of 53 degrees that only happens on the saturation curve. Since both states are fully defined, we can use the psychrometric chart or a psychrometric calculator to look up any other parameters for each state. I use the psychrometric calculator from Dayton Ashray, which I highly recommend but in a test environment, you may want to use the psychrometric chart since that's all you'll have in the exam. Either way, to depict the air conditioning process, here's a rough sketch of what is happening as the air goes from state one to state two. As you can see, the air undergoes sensible cooling horizontally to the left and then rides down the saturation curve as it undergoes a combination of sensible and latent cooling, ultimately stopping at state two. What we're interested in are the humidity ratio values for each state, and we want to find the difference. So we go horizontally over to the right, and we choose the humidity ratio values off of the vertical axis. And the humidity ratio for state one is 0 0.01592 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And for state two, it's 0 0.00857 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And I've also jotted down the specific volume for state one, which we'll need in just a moment. The way we're going to solve this problem is using equation 3826 from the MERM, which tells us that the mass flow rate of condensate being removed from an airstream during an air conditioning process depends on the mass flow rate of air, how much air you're moving, and the difference in the humidity ratio of the streams entering and leaving the coil. This makes sense because the more air you process, the more condensate you would expect to remove, as long as there's enough cooling capacity to do the job. In other words, you're able to keep the coil cold enough. And the entering air conditions need to stay the same. At some point, if you remove enough moisture from the space, the return air coming back and entering the coil may be drier to begin with. So you won't realize the full capacity if the dehumidification load isn't present. But here we'll assume that there's a constant source of humidity and the system's in a steady state. So the humidity is being replenished in the space and there's always warm, moist air coming back into the unit. Also, we don't actually know what the mass flow rate of air is, but we do know the volume flow rate, which we can divide by the specific volume for state one. So we'll rearrange the equation as shown here, and we can also expand the delta between the humidity ratios as shown. So let's jump to a clean slide and plug it all in. Here's our equation again for finding the mass flow rate of condensate. Now let's plug in the volume flow rate, 15,000 CFM, the specific volume, 14.4 cubic feet per pound of dry air, the humidity ratio for each state as shown, and we can cross out the units. We'll be left with pounds of water per minute, and the answer is 7.66. But we want the answer in GPM, which is a volume flow rate, so we can use mass equals density times volume and rearrange to get volume flow rate by itself. Then plug in and divide by the density of water, which is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, and convert the volume to gallons instead of cubic feet. They're just under 7.5 gallons in a cubic foot. Again, cross out the units. We'll be left with gallons per minute. And the final answer is 
0.92 gallons per minute. As a sense check, 15,000 CFM is basically the size of a large air handler. So could you believe that with hot, humid air entering the unit and running a 53 degree coil, this unit could remove almost a gallon per minute of water from the air? That's a bit more than a shot glass every second. It's a fair amount of water, but also when you think about the area and depth of the coil and total volume of air, it doesn't seem crazy. Also, going back to the picture of the condensate drain, could you imagine a shot of water per second trickling down that clear sight glass? If so, then the answer passes the sanity check. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this problem. If you're a mechanical engineer studying for the PE exam and you'd like to submit a question, the best way to do that is to send me an email, dan at mechanicalpeexamprep.com. It can be a specific problem you're working on or a conceptual question that's bugging you or a general question about the study process itself. Anything related to PE exam prep, I'll answer to the best of my ability. So until next week, happy studying.